Hi guys, welcome back to Junris Blagadagri Act. For today's video reaction, a documentary because we really have to go back our history so that we will have to know and refresh our minds what really the history in the past like a uh, war. This the title of this video is a six day war in 1967 known as the third Arab Israeli war. This is just a documentary and credit to the owner also with the video kings and generals i'll put in the description box below so that you can connect also with kings and generals the owner of this video and if you're new to my channel just click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell so that you'll be updated on our future uploads and if you have some comments suggestion related to this video or any kings and generals or any uh, video that you can suggest drop it in the comment section i would love to read and respond to you all make your video requests get to it yes and allow me to read some information with this video we are continuing our series of animated historical videos on the mo modern wars with the six day war of 1967 also known as the third arab israeli war during which israel fought the alliance of egypt syria and jordan and iraq this conflict in third history as a short but decisive as it took less than a week for hostilities to start and end and was mostly decided in the year oh my this is such an amazing like history that we really know and see with this one and i know that it will impress you and repress our mind also what really happens on this uh, on this war this is such an amazing and thank you so much king and general and i hope guys you will be enjoyed and learn something about this video let's get to it so excited really really excited This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Learn more about Skillshare and the exclusive offer they have for our viewers at the end of the video. Ever since the Israeli victory during the wars of 1948 and 1956, the Arab coalition, led by Egypt, Syria and Jordan, was eager to change the situation in the region by defeating Israel. Please uh, turn on Both your sides understood uh, that the sub, uh, sub, was far subtitles, from guys. and were preparing for the next stage of confrontation. International interference and the inability of the sides to find a settlement made one of the most iconic conflicts of the modern era, the Six Day War, inevitable. Oh my on May 13th, 1967, the Soviet Union falsely informed Egypt about the concentration of 11 to 13 brigades of the Israeli Defense Forces with an intent to strike Syria. Oh my God! Really? In response, Egypt started concentrating forces along the border with Israel in Sinai, and on May 16th, demanded that the UN peacekeeping forces leave the peninsula. At the same time, Israel refused the request of the UN to deploy the UNEF on their side of the border. Oh. In the next few days, Egypt, Israel, Jordan and Sudan started mobilization of their forces, Iraq sent expeditionary forces to Jordan, and Saudi Arabia expressed its willingness to participate in military actions. Oh my God. But the turning point, which made the full-scale confrontation this. inevitable, was the decision of Egypt to block Israeli ships from entering the Straits of Tehran on May 22nd and 23rd. Oh my God, this is like... On June 1st, Israel established war. a national unity government, which on June 4th decided to go to war. The Arab coalition of Egypt, Jordan and Syria had an advantage over Israel in deployed troops with 240,000 against 100,000, in tanks mm. with 2,504 well, against 800, and in aircraft with 957 against 300. Oh my. Israel planned to strike on June 5th with Operation Focus, which aimed to destroy the Egyptian Air Force. Israeli, it's like, Israeli yeah, media powerful. published false reports claiming Israeli soldiers were on vacation, while their pilots were carrying out training sorties as usual. Oh my God. Their intelligence They're really planning. helped make this training as realistic as possible. Wow. They also damaged the tracking antenna of the U.S. Embassy to prevent the Americans finding out about the operation before the strike took place. The Israeli pilots were informed about the start of the operation only five hours in advance. Oh my At the God. same time, 
time. The Sometimes you can really think that some enemies are very clever and very Egypt. smart in doing like Nearly this 200 one. Israeli aircraft attacked 14 Egyptian airfields and caught them absolutely off guard. 338 Egyptian aircraft were destroyed and 100 pilots were killed within three hours. The Jordanian and Syrian air forces attacked Israel in retaliation at 11 a.m. on June 5th. The response of the Israeli Air Force was to attack their airfields, which led to the destruction of all 28 Jordanian, 53 Syrian and 10 Iraqi planes. Operation Focus was a decisive success. Israel lost only 19 planes in this operation and guaranteed its total air dominance for the rest of the war. The ground war was taking place on three fronts. The Sinai Front, the Jordanian Front and the Syrian Front. Wow. On the Sinai front, the Egyptian forces consisted of seven divisions, I four armed, known this. two infantry, and one mechanized infantry. Egypt had 100,000 troops and 900 to 950 tanks in the Sinai, so Israel concentrated three divisions, consisting of six armored, one infantry, Be one really mechanized blinded. infantry, and three paratrooper brigades for a total of 70,000 men and 700 tanks along this front. Israel's plan was to catch the Egyptians off guard by attacking simultaneously with airstrikes and attacking through the northern and central routes in the Sinai Peninsula instead of the central and southern routes used during the Sinai War. Oh my God. On the 5th of June at 7.50 a.m., the northernmost Israeli division, consisting of three brigades and commanded by Major General Israel Tal, started its advance towards Arish through Gaza with an aim to encircle Khan Yunus, while the paratroopers were ordered to take Rafa. Mm -hmm. Initially, the Egyptians offered little resistance, since their intelligence concluded that this was a diversion rather than a main attack. Of course. However, soon resistance against the 60th Armoured Brigade ramped up. This did not stop the Israeli forces from reaching the Khan Yunus railway junction in four hours. Afterwards, the IDF advanced on Shi'ak Zawiyad and defeated fierce Egyptian resistance thanks to air domination. The road to Arish was open, and by 8 a.m. on the 6th of July, elements of the 79th Armoured Battalion and the 7th Brigade entered the suspiciously quiet city. Suddenly, the Egyptians started firing from the balconies and windows, and there was a heavy battle going on for control of the city. Imagine the of IDF the was only able to take full the, control of the city times. after reinforcements were so sent. Sad. The northernmost division then split into two parts. One of them continued the advance on the Suez Canal, while the second group turned south and captured Bir Lafan and Jabal Libni. Oh Further south, on the 6th of June, the 14,000-man, 150-tank-strong Israeli 38th Armoured Division under Major General Ariel Sharon was confronted by the Egyptian 2nd Infantry Division under Major General Saadi Naguib, consisting of 16,000 troops and 90 tanks. Israel successfully advanced towards Abu Aghalem. The paratroopers landed behind Egyptian positions and sowed enough confusion to weaken the artillery of the Egyptian defense, which opened the way for the IDF to capture Umm Katef. It was followed by a fierce close tank battle, which ended in an Israeli victory, with 40 Egyptian and 19 Israeli tanks destroyed. The Egyptian forces in Sinai were still largely intact, but their field marshal, Abdel Hakim Amir panicked and ordered the retreat of all units from Sinai after hearing about the fall of Abu Aghala. This order did not elaborate on the sequence and manner of the retreat, which only decreased the defensive capabilities of the Egyptian troops. Really interesting history, guys. This is so smart. During the following days, the Very IDF smart. continued its advance westward and inflicted heavy losses on the Egyptians. Despite episodic heavy resistance by the Egyptians, as in Bin Gafgafa, the Ooh. napalm bombing by Israeli aviation and the uncontrolled retreat weakened the morale of the Egyptian troops. Instead of catching retreating Egyptians, the IDF decided to capture three passes from Sinai to the Egyptian mainland and face the Egyptian troops there. God. Although
Though the IDF was not able to stop all the Egyptian troops from crossing, this is just a these of passes became this time, a killing this ground, period with 10,000 Egyptians being killed oh in one day alone. See? The capture of Sinai was completed by the fall of Sharm el-Sheikh on June 7th and Ras Sudar on June 8th. On June 9th, the UN Security Council achieved armistice between both sides. Israel wanted to avoid confrontation with Jordan and Syria before defeating Egypt, but the offers of neutrality to Jordan were rejected, as the Egyptian President Nasser persuaded King Hussein of Jordan that Egypt had an advantage against Israel. On the morning of the 5th of June, both sides started to fire, but Israel attempted a last grasp attempt to avoid confrontation with Jordan by passing its message requesting peace through the UN representative, Bull. King Hussein countered that it was too late, and the Jordanian Agreed. Air Force was it's already really, on the way. Really too late. Jordanian and Iraqi aviation started shelling Israeli-controlled West Jerusalem, which caused 16 military and 20 civilian casualties, with 900 buildings damaged. Israel responded with its own air attack within Operation Focus, which damaged the military aviation infrastructure of Jordan and secured Israeli air dominance. East Jerusalem was controlled by Jordan at the time, and the Jordanian army took position in the UN residency, the government house, to fire on the Israeli sector. The Jerusalem Brigade's Reserve Battalion 161 of Israel took the government house despite heavy losses and forced the Jordanians to retreat to Bethlehem. Later on that day, Israel encircled eastern Jerusalem with the Jerusalem Brigade from the south and the mechanized Harel Brigade and 55th Paratroopers Brigade oh from the God. north. A fierce battle took place for Ammunition Hill. Jordanian resistance was so strong that the IDF lost all but two of their attacking officers and achieved the goal only after four hours. The 55th Paratroopers Brigade afterwards drove eastwards, reaching Mount Scopus and defeating the other Jordanian positions around the American colony. Towards the evening of June 5th, the mechanized Harel Brigade succeeded in taking Letrun and Ramallah, also, the 163rd Infantry Battalion secured Abu Tor and cut the old city from Bethlehem and Hebron. On June 7, the Israeli Minister of Defense, Moshe Dayan, ordered the IDF to enter the old city despite reservations and concerns by the Israeli government. The fighting was conducted solely by the paratroopers out of fear of destruction of holy sites. Yeah, the IDF took control of the old holy, city Jerusalem with little is a holy resistance. Place. Judea, Hebron, Bethlehem and Nablus Hebron. were also captured by the IDF on June 7th. Remnants of the Jordanian army fell back into Jordan. Oh Israel was victorious on this front as well. They really planned it Syria so also smart. believed Nasser about Egypt's early success in the conflict and sent its aviation to attack Galilee. This attack was intercepted by Israeli aircraft. A minor ground attack was also attempted by the Syrians, hoping to capture the water plants at Tel Dan, Dan and Shia Yashuv. This was repulsed by the IDF as well. Israeli air domination, lack of communication by Syrian units and tanks being too wide for bridges were among the causes of the unsuccessful attack of the Syrians. This caused them to abandon any attempts to make ground offensives on Israel, and airstrikes were chosen as their method instead. However, on the evening of June 5th, Israel struck Syrian airfields as part of Operation Focus, destroying two-thirds of the Syrian air force and forcing the rest out of the conflict. The Israeli leadership was unsure whether to attack Syria or not. On one hand, Syria was using the Golan Heights to shell Israel. On the other hand, it would have been a literally uphill battle against a fortified enemy. But intelligence this about weakened like positions of Syria in general, war. and in Golan Heights in particular, led Diane to order an offensive on Golan without government authorization. The Israeli offensive started with airstrikes, which severely damaged the defensive infrastructure and morale of the Syrian army. 
The 8th Armoured Brigade, led by Colonel Albert Mandler, advanced into the Golan Heights from Givet Haim. Heavy fighting in unfavourable terrain led to numerous casualties on both sides, but with the help of their aircraft, the IDF ultimately captured the Zora, Kala and Einfit fortresses. In the central sector, the Israeli 181st Battalion captured the strongholds of Dardara and Tel Hilal after fierce fighting. By the evening of June 9th, Israel reached the plateau, which allowed reinforcements to join them. By dawn, Israel had eight brigades ready for an assault on the second line of defences. Soon, a ceasefire was negotiated around the so-called Purple Line. By the 11th of June, all military actions stopped. Up to 983 Israelis, 15,000 Egyptians, 700 Jordanians and 2,500 Syrians were killed in action. Israel gained a huge victory. It seized the Gaza Strip, the Sinai Peninsula, the west bank of the Jordan River, including East Jerusalem and the Golan Heights. About one million Arabs were placed under Israel's direct control in the newly captured territories. Oh my the Israeli victory came as a result of more efficient military leadership, better preparation of troops and intelligence. But the Six Day They're War really was by no means the last conflict, and merely six years later, the confrontation escalated into another war. Oh. The sponsor of this video, Skillshare, is the premier online learning community oh with more goodness. than 22,000 classes that teach videography. That was really an amazing video, guys. So, like learning the history. Israeli like groups, they really outsmart to other countries that they are planning to attack. Why? They just like making some news that they are not around in the country. Oh my god. Making some false news also because they are ready to attack to those like uh like nearby nations that's why they really have like a good leadership in that time also that's why they conquered and they won a very nice war and this is such a very interesting topic also this animation is utterly like good and superb the way how they make it and this is really have to know the history that we sometimes we don't know that this happens in the past and now I'm so happy learning with this one. I'm, I'm so glad that I learned something about this one. That such an amazing video and it really refreshes my mind that this war existed. And thank you so much once again to King and Generals for this amazing video. And guys, if you want to check the full videos in the description box below. If you like this video the same as I did, just give a massive thumbs up. Like and share, subscribe also with my channel. This is Junis Blagadag Reacting. Stay humble, stay positive guys. And if you have some comments, suggestion related to this video drop it on the comment section below to read and respond you all if you want to check my second channel it's in the description box below and if you want to also check with my social media accounts is in here and thank you so much once again this is junior's blog that thanks stay humble stay positive guys bye and see you in my next video reaction have a good day everyone